Hello again, and welcome to RP Zero America. So here we're going to be launching the um, space station finally. <laughs> so it is a very large uh, launcher. It's a whole new uh, craft for our uh, playthrough here. So it has two giant solid rockets on the sides. Yeah, it's a like basically a variant of like Titan 3C. All right, so we can pretty much launch it um, into whatever inclination uh, we want. This the goal is it needs to be reachable by a kind of a standard Gemini. So let's get it up there. Mm -hmm. So the first stage of uh, this rocket is you know just two giant solid engines. It's with um, like gimbling nozzles. Now recall what technology this no this one uses to uh, to gimbal it or uh, you know to kind of control the thrust. I believe this tube along the side is that I find a little hard to see right now because of the uh, uh, the engine lighting off of them. I believe it produces kind of a secondary thrust. Uh, don't recall if it's by burning liquids or if it is its own kind of solid thing. But you know that the somehow the whatever is burning off in there is used to control the thrust in solid. I don't know too much about solid rocket engines. I just know some gimbal, some don't. These ones have a cant outwards as well, so you couldn't use these as a first stage. <laughs> uh, you just have to use them in pairs like this. Alright, so let's just dig in. Uh, so we are approaching max Q. It's giving me a little trouble to control. It usually doesn't. Um, the, you know, the Titan 3 variants, but we're passing through max Q, so that should make it a little bit easier, and then we can start to pitch down more. Okay, we'll put it in something like a, a 300 by 300 orbit, or something compatible with that. Just um, don't have to adjust it before we get the next craft to orbit, because whatever ends up making it easier to rendezvous both of these, the better. And very shortly after this, um, launch we will be sending up the Gemini because I found that's it's usually the easiest uh, way to bring two craft uh, into, into rendezvous is to, is to launch them one very shortly after the other and so for RP0 that means you need to upgrade your your, your VAB uh, so you can have two launch pads which kind of upgrade um, do they upgrade separately I think somehow that manages yeah you have the ability to so they'll have independent maximum mass limits so you need to make sure, you know, you might want to name them such that, just bring this down, I need to name them so you can tell which one is your big one, because you know, usually I'll only have one launch pad that can launch something as big as a Saturn V, all right, and so thrust is tailing off there, you can see we drop below 1G, so we ignite this second stage with the ullage of what remains of the solids, and then drop the solids off. All right, we are well on our way into space. Didn't um, pitch down quite as much as I wanted to, but uh, this craft because it's 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 basically four stages to orbit. It's certainly not uh, your average modern craft. It's just add more stages and such to it to get more delta v, get more mass to uh, to orbit with these titans, and you know keep stretching the stages as well. I think the titan this titan three tank is stretched from the titan two tank. Right, so I was watching these times. So now we're a bit below orbit. Let's see, let's go 23. All right, so we're now high enough we can pop off. I uh, usually wait till about 100 kilometers, but that's good enough. We have a really low dynamic pressure. That's the, that's the goal. All right, there we go. So I have made, I have used the Apollo docking mechanism. That's what I'm using for our docking system here because they're they're relatively low mass. There's a um, like a non a non gendered version of Apollo we have in RP zero, um, or it's a where you can use you know, use them to. Whereas here you know you've got this one which is like what the Lem would usually have, and then the other docking port uh, as Apollo would have. So there's a male and a female variant. It's a non-gendered version, but it's pretty heavy. It's like 400 kilograms, which is too much mass to add to a Gemini. So I decided to go with you know, with the gendered version instead. And that's pretty much all we have so far. We have very little Apollo era technology so far, but we're you know, that's what we're kind of aiming to unlock because we're uh, unlocking that Apollo era technology such that we can let me extend that. 
um, so that we can um, go to the moon and send you know, lots of people, lots of mass. Well, not a lot of people, I guess, just two people at a time. Uh, we could potentially do missions to the moon with more people in the future. There's just not contracts right now that request it. Uh, in fact, our first attempt to our first mission to launch three people into orbit at all will uh, it's it's you know, still incomplete. We ha still have not launched more than two people into orbit, and this is no exception. We're launching a pretty heavy payload here to low Earth orbit. I think one of the largest things we've sent to low Earth orbit that we intend you know, to stay there um, with this craft. It's watching this time, so it's kind of flat, which is good because we're kind of hitting a very high uh, let's see acceleration as this stage gets close to burning out, and then we'll have to hot stage the next one. So this will be our first space station. Note to self: double check that we have uh, unlocked the contract for a space station. Oh yeah, I've, I've got some kind of weird, um, something weird with the craft where it, uh, the, the base node, it kept thinking it's in, the, in, in that first stage, which was also causing kind of the weird shape that I've gone with on this to, to be even weirder. <laughs> Sorry, not very descriptive, but um, kind of, a, it was using these tanks to kind of cover up the way this, this nozzle kind of sticks out, and they kept um, centering to the middle, which was really weird. All right, so yeah, we're approaching about 200 kilometers. It's not too bad at all. I think that would be a good orbit to start with, 200 by 300 or something like that. Definitely a lot more stages. They're just smaller stages with this Titan uh, launch vehicle. It's not the most mass efficient either. I mean, it's got solids, which aren't very, very don't have very high ISP, and then you know the, the that stage we just uh, got rid of, and this stage. Not terribly high ISP either, and they're they're using hypergolics. It was launched a lot uh, of times, though. In reality, um, the Titan II, Titan III, Titan IV, uh, particularly for United States, you know, reconnaissance, um, basically, you know, spy satellites or other kind of um, Earth observing satellites. So leveling off. So this is a pretty heavy station payload. I need to make sure to send up a scientist as well. Uh, in a, in a, when I was testing to kind of make sure this docking port was working, I did not, in fact, have a scientist, so I couldn't test out the full science capabilities of this station. So as we uh, are approaching apoapsis, that time is slowly but surely approaching zero. I don't know if it'll get there, though, which is, which is good. It's kind of what we want. It did not quite make it there. We can pitch down a little bit to account for that. And if I remember it right, we, we definitely need still need some delta v out of the trans stage. This last stage is one I don't believe I don't think I've used before in this. Uh, so it's it's kind of an odd uh, an odd oddity. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of use because it doesn't have a very high efficiency engine, uh, but it is useful for low Earth orbit. So I've used it here, and it's got a number of ignitions. So find it to be an interesting an interesting vehicle. All right, so we don't want to be heading down now, actually. We've only got 30 seconds left in this, so let's just get vertical speed back to flat. Oh, and I didn't uh, set up the staging too well in this, so I'll have to kind of manually ignite the engine. Kind of restage things, so let's just pitch down. So time to Apo is in the future and moving further. All right, so let's see. So engine out and be pulling that off. I don't know what that is. Oh, I must have set up. Maybe one, yeah, that was all inside the fairing, so. All right. And there we go. So Apo is 20 seconds in the future. So I had to reset up this, um, reconfigure this plume, because the plume is showing like pretty close to the center of mass, so I think it's not, not too bad of a hypergolic plume for it. We are well out to ocean now, so not exactly a lot to look at down there. Uh, it's a pretty low thrust upper stage as well. It's just, you know, all around, it's kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a Gina, but bigger. Oh, I've got hydrazine in it, that's weird. I thought it emptied that, because I don't have any hydrazine thrusters on this, so the hydrazine is just kind of a waste, but it's not too critical, because we just need to get it to low Earth orbit and then rendezvous something with it. And we've got, uh, we've got plenty of, you know, thrusters on it for orienting and docking, so 
think we're good. We even got some, I even threw some lights on, so in case we end up doing our rendezvous and docking in the dark. So this will be our very first space station up, two people in it, and it, yeah, it'll, keep, it'll keep people in for quite a long time. I think the longest mission we've done in low Earth orbit, we've probably done longer missions where we were going out towards the moon actually, it was like two weeks. And so this will definitely set new duration records for both astronauts who come up. Um, but we don't want to, we won't be flying very many of these. We, this might be the only um, manned orbital laboratory mission we fly in fact, we'll see how how the Apollo technology develops. We might still, uh, if we have a gap between when we, you know, when we're getting this Apollo hardware, we could use for for more advanced stations. And, yeah, and when we actually launch, we might we might launch another mission up with a manned orbital laboratory just to kind of keep a, a presence in orbit. You know, sending people up at least once or twice a year, just to keep that experience up. You know, keep because um, right now we're just starting to build build a roster of astronauts who have. Good skill, long you know, long duration experience in low Earth orbit. Although well, this will be a very long time they're spending in zero g, and so that's you know, you know, it's not just duration in space, but it's a very weird experience. They will be floating weightlessly for you know more than two weeks, and they'll be in a pretty substantial amount of space. Not like when they were in Gemini, uh, when you're basically crammed into the front of a VW Bug. <laughs> with two spacesuits. So this will be a lot uh, more spacious but a lot longer of a mission, so it's a bit of a trade-off for whoever we send up here. We might even pick two new astronauts, who knows. Since it's, it's low Earth orbit, right, they don't need... Um, I think the, the tradition of the real Gemini program was they'd always send up one person who'd been up before and then a newbie. Um, so they can kind of sandwich together that, you know, that experience uh, that experienced person to become a, re a real veteran and somebody who'd never been in space before so they can kind of become that first tier veteran. All right, so I'm going to cut off when we get to about 300 kilometers uh, as our apoapsis. It's not too high, it's not a very high orbit, so it should be reachable. There we go, so we've shut down the engine. We've got three ignitions remaining here, it looks like, so let's just shut down the engine uh, so it doesn't get expanded. And then we've got the, uh, the RCS, so we'll enable those. And we're losing power, not too much power. Um, we'll put out the solar panel for this. So we have our first station in orbit. And very quickly, I'll be going down to the ground to launch the second uh, vehicle, the Gemini to come rendezvous uh, for docking. So thanks for watching RP0 America, sending up our first space station, the manned orbital laboratory. Next up, we'll be sending the men. Goodbye.